Okay. Let's go for it. <laughs> Hi everyone um, and thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you've had a lovely day so far. It's nice and sunny out there. Um, so welcome to the ESPC hosted Fife Property Market Update today. Um, we have set aside about 30 minutes um, and we're just going to run you through all about the market and then we're going to have a little Q&A session at the end. Um, we have had some pre-submitted questions, so thanks so much for everyone for pre-submitting them. Um, but if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, just pop it in the chat or just uh, get in touch with us afterwards. We'd be more than happy to answer that for you. Um, but before I hand over and kick off the meeting, I'm just going to introduce you. We've got a panel of experts here today who are going to be updating you. So I'm just going to introduce you to everyone um, before we kick off. Um, so first up, we have Claire Flynn who is from our ESPC marketing team, giving us a little wave there. Um, and she's going to be talking us through the market update and also um, the questions as well. Uh, we also have uh, Paul DeMarco, who is from ESPC, and he's one of our independent mortgage advisors um, with ESPC. And last but definitely not least, we have our solicitor for today, who is Michael Maloko, who is from Maloko and Associates, who are based in Dunfermline. So, um, yeah, without further ado, I will hand you over to Claire, who's going to talk you through the market updates. Uh, thanks, Ash. Um, yep, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the key market data and statistics we have for Fife and Kinross over the past few months, just to paint a bit of a picture about what's been happening in the market there uh, before we go on to uh, the pre-submitted questions. Um, so looking at the period from December to February, uh, the average selling price across Fife and Kinross uh, for properties was just under £220,000. So that's up about 12% compared to the previous year, um, which is quite a reasonable increase uh, in, in average selling price. We also noticed that homes in uh, across Fife and Kinross during this period were sold for just over 102% of home report valuation on average. Um, again, this is a bit of an increase compared to last year. The same period last year, homes were being sold for around 98.9% uh, of home report valuation. So that's over three percentage points difference there, um, again, which is a reasonable increase. Um, this does suggest that more people are bidding over the home report valuation in order to secure properties, which suggests a more competitive marketplace. Um, and moving on to the volume of property sales. So in Fife, as with many other ESPC areas like Edinburgh Lothians and the Borders, we have seen um, property sales volume really increase in the last few months. Um, and so in Fife, it was up 13% year on year. This is indicative of just how busy the Scottish property market was in the second half of 2020, right through until the sort of typically quiet, quieter winter months with a lot of activity with properties going under offer and those sales uh, kind of being finalized and, and completed now. Um, and But on the other side of that, the, the number of homes coming to market in Fife and Kinross is actually down uh, by just under 22% year on year. And this is quite a big decline, but again, this is a trend we're seeing across different ESPC areas. Um, and the decline is concentrated in January and February of 2021. So um, December, we're actually still seeing a reasonable increase on the previous year in terms of new property listings. So there's a few different reasons we think could be behind the sort of less uh, lower volume of homes coming to market. The start of 2020 did see a pretty, um, it was a pretty strong start to the year in terms of the market and number of homes coming to market. There was quite a lot, so always a, a maybe a harder bar to then reach again. But also, obviously, we entered 2021 uh, into a new lockdown. Uh, we had the stay at home guidance in place and, of course, homeschooling, uh, which uh, the impact of homeschooling um, definitely could have uh, impacted the decision of families uh, about whether they, they maybe wanted just to just postpone selling their home by a little bit. Um, but actually in March, as we've started to see the kind of phased return of schools and um, pupils going back to school, we've already noted a bit of an increase in homes coming to market. And we do think as further lockdown restrictions ease, obviously we've got the announcement later today that might set up, set out some clearer dates on this. Um, we will start to see more homes coming to market, which might help to alleviate some of the, the high buyer demand that we're seeing evidence of in Fife and Kinross. Um, the stat I kind of want to finish on because I think it's a particularly a significant one is uh, the selling time. So 
In Fife and Kinross, uh, from December to February, the median number of days for a property to be placed under offer was just 17 days, which is 17 days faster than last year. And in Dunfermline, where we see the greatest volume of property sales, it was just 13 days, which is 21 days faster than last year. So that's a full three weeks faster, um, which is uh, quite significant. Uh, and again, that just emphasises the competitive nature of the market. People are moving quickly in order to secure a home that they that, that they want um, so so yeah I think it, it, in sort of I guess in summary of where we're at the market what our stats are telling us is that it's a competitive market in Fife uh, there's more buyer demand than there is supply which is kind of emphasizing that competition for homes but potentially as lockdown restrictions ease we will start to see more supply coming to the market and more homes coming to the market which might help to alleviate and balance out the market a little bit in terms of that strong buyer demand so hopefully that's painted a bit of a picture for you guys in terms of where we're, uh, what the Fife property market has been doing in recent months. So now I'll move on to the pre-submitted questions. Uh, thanks to everyone who submitted a question in advance. If you didn't get a chance to submit one or if you just you have a question that pops into your head while we're asking these, please feel free to pop it in the chat or the Q&A box at the bottom and I'll do my best to get to those at the end if we do have time. So the first question is for Michael, and it's, is it a good time to buy in Fife? Hey, yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, mate. Good afternoon, mate. Um, It's always a good time to buy in Fife. That's the kingdom of Fife, God's own country. Always a good time to buy. Um, joking apart, I've been completely honest with you, it's a better time to be selling in Fife right now because of the... Um, issues you've just highlighted there in terms of the lack of property coming to the market, which again, to uh, echo and underline what you've already said from our uh, research and those to whom we're speaking is primarily has been down to homeschooling and just the fact that the kitchen tables become the classroom um, and, you know, the, all the sort of confusion that goes maybe with that, people not being prepared to, to have people to their homes. Um, that's led, as you've mentioned, to the imbalance in supply and demand, uh, and therefore, um, as I say, and as you've indicated, properties are selling for well above home report and in double quick time. So, a great time to be to, to, to be a seller for certain. In terms of being a buyer, um, then yes, I mean, you know, the, the I don't see any reason to believe that house prices are going to, to fall back uh, in in this area. Um, therefore, looking to purchase now, because there's every chance that it will be um, cheaper now than it will be in six, in six months' time. Um, and if the right property becomes available for you right now, then that's when to go for it, not, not to try and wait uh, and see what else becomes um, available. Uh, a very, very buoyant market at the moment. So yes, I would say a good, a good time uh, to be buying, just not spoiled for choice. Thanks, Michael. That's really useful. And just touching, I'm just interested of touching obviously on the strong buyer demand. Do you think that the lockdown restrictions of last year and, you know, the impact of the pandemic has affected buyer demand in Fife? Has it increased Fife's desirability with more people working from home and things like that? Yeah. Um, yes, we're seeing a bit more demand from outlying areas from people coming uh, north across the, across the coast from, from Edinburgh, obviously, you know, more back here, but uh, for for one thing, and people now realise how much maybe I don't need to be so so close to, to to the office in Edinburgh. Maybe you know doing this type of thing in Zoom calls and all the rest, and working remotely is going to become the norm. Maybe I only need to go to the office a couple of times a week, uh, and if I can time it, I can beat the, the rush hour traffic. So yes, we are seeing uh, an increase um, because because of that. Where we've really seen an increase though is. Um, in the three-bedded market, the three-bed semi-market, which uh, I believe um, is the most searched for property term across the ESPC. Um, and we're seeing a lot of people moving from two-bed flats, looking for three-bed homes, um, even just couples. Um, so they maybe don't particularly need the extra bedrooms, but that bedroom's been designated as a workspace. And I think if you look on our, our website, a lot of the properties we're selling at the moment, um, third bedroom, you know, has a desk and PC prominent in there. Um, so that's driving that sector of the market in, in particular uh, that we're seeing that. So both from external to Fife, but also internal demand within Fife. 
Great, thanks Michael, that's really interesting to hear. Um, and the next question we have is for Paul, and it's uh, quite a, a one that I think you're frequently asked as an independent mortgage advisor, Paul, but also we've had a lot of these questions at events. But I do think it's there's been a few developments even in this in the last couple of months, so good to kind of just clarify where we are now with this. But um, how much deposit do you need for a mortgage right now? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, currently, um, if you're not using one of the government schemes, which I'll come on to in a minute, um, you need 10% of the purchase price or the valuation, whichever the lower. Um, in uh, anywhere in Scotland, but even in Fife, obviously, as we're talking about Fife just now, you will probably more than likely, in some cases, have to overpay. Um, you'll have to pay above the valuation and mortgages are all based on the lower of the of, of one or the other. So if, if for example, um, you bid 100,000 um, on a valuation of 100,000, basically your mortgage is based on 100,000. If you have to bid slightly over say 105,000 on 100,000, then you've got to find that extra 5,000 pound yourself and your mortgages is basically based on the 100,000. So it's 10% of that figure. And that is basically if you want to buy without using one of the, gov of the government schemes. Now, there are currently three, in Scotland, there are three main government schemes. Um, you will get a lot of information on the ASPC website about these three schemes, but I'll briefly tell you about them. The first one is LIFT Lift, okay? So that, that one, you only need 5% deposit of the purchase price. The way that works is it's basically you're restricted to the number of apartments. So an apartment is like, say, a living room and two bedrooms. So that'd be a three apartment and so on and so on. Um, basically, that's based on um, the, uh, the purchase price. You, the, the lim there's limits on these and they are quite low. But it's worth looking at that on our website. The other one is um, the new mortgage guarantee scheme, a bit more straightforward. Uh, there's no government help as such uh, in terms of financial uh, rewards. However, all you need is a 5% deposit uh, to, to, to actually have this uh, mortgage. And this will start on the 1st of April. The third one is the first home fund where this appears to be probably the most popular one, where the Scottish government will um, give you up to £25,000 towards a deposit. However, it must be used towards the deposit, not for lawyer's fees, um, mortgage fees, or anything else, only for the deposit. Um, there are obviously a few caveats with that, where when you go to sell the property in the future, um, you've got to pay back the amount plus any profits that you make from the uh, from the property. So they're the three main schemes. You all need 5% deposit of your own money. And if you do it like normally without using a government scheme, it's 10%. Great, thanks Paul, that's really useful. As you say, there's a lot to be aware of there in terms of the different schemes available to help you. So always good to consult with an expert uh, mortgage advisor on that. And I, and I know the mortgage guarantee scheme has been big news recently because that was announced quite recently. So uh, there'll be quite a lot of people possibly interested in that um, when those products start to become available. Um, so yeah, and one of the things you highlighted there, which is so important to be aware of, is obviously bearing in mind that you might need to save a bit extra to bid over the uh, home report valuation, which kind of leads nicely into our next question, because um, I think it's a question a lot of buyers have about, oh, if, especially if they've maybe been struggling to get an offer accepted. Um, so, Michael, if someone was to ask you how much over the asking price or home report valuation they need to pay in Fife, what would you advise them? Sure. Um... Yeah, at the moment, most people are having to pay over uh, home report value. Uh, it's seldom that we're seeing things uh, fail to reach home report. Um, there's a number of um, factors that one takes into account, Claire, and, and there's also uh, a, you know, a, a conversation that I always have with clients. So firstly, each case on its merits, because there will be homes out there that you know, when you look at the home report, you can see it's maybe been on the market for four or five months. And statistically, you know, if a property doesn't achieve its home report within about the first four to six weeks, it tails off rapidly as to how much it will, how likely it is to achieve that. So one's always looking at each particular case on its merits. What does the home report say? How long has it been in the market? You know, is there a, an appetite for that property? Um, then it's different for different sectors. So um, I touched upon three bed semis in Dunfermline. When one looks at the demographic, the average salaries in the area, the, the average you know, 
couple, uh, maybe with a couple of kids. Um, what they're looking to buy in Dunfermline tends to be three bed semis, maybe a three bed detached. Um, and that's where the biggest demand is. So it's all about supply and demand. Uh, you know, the greater the demand, the more you're going to have to go over. So whilst the average for this area might be about 102, 103% over home report, once you get to the good three bed semi, you're looking at that being closer to you know, 108, 110% being, being paid. So all about having early conversations with your financial advisors to understand how much you've got available to you, and then having that early conversation with your solicitor also. And then it's based upon, okay, how long have I been looking? You know, if you've been looking for six months and you've looked at 60 properties, and this is the only one that you're interested in, it's the only one that ticks the boxes, clearly you're going to want to push the boat out a little bit for that one, because it might be another six months before something else becomes available. If you've been looking for two weeks, you've looked at two properties and either of them would be suitable, and the type of thing you're looking at comes up every other week, different, it's going to be a different conversation. And you know, where I always go with clients when I'm having these conversations and giving them the benefit of, of my years of experience is to say, look, you know, I don't want to have to make the call to say you've been unsuccessful, but, you know, should I have to do so? You want to be fairly sanguine about it, relaxed about it, and know that, as your mum would probably say, you know, what's meant for you won't go past you. Um, you know, you've given it your best shot. You don't want to be kicking yourself thinking, oh, why didn't I offer another £500? Why didn't I put in that other £1,000 that we had available to us? You know, you, you're, you're just best to, to, to go for it and give it your best shot. If someone comes up with an outlandish figure, I'll tell them it's outlandish and they're paying far too much. So it's about, you know, so many factors. The knowledge, you know, the advice you've had from your financial advisor and how much you can borrow, the purchasers or the would-be purchasers own um, feelings towards that particular property, their own circumstances, and the solicitor's knowledge. And together, you hopefully can come up with a figure that really puts you in, in the mix. Okay, hope that answers. That's a great answer, Michael. Thank you so much. As you say, there's so many different factors to consider there. Um, I think we're quite frequently in these events asked if there's a magic number that people can bid over or, you know, what is the average, per, you know, and, you know, I talked about the averages earlier, but as you say, different properties are different and there's lots of different circumstances to take into consideration. If there was a magic figure, if it was so many pounds and so many pence per square foot, everyone would offer the same thing at the closing date. So you know, you've just got to get, get in there and Always, all, never, never offer a round figure. Uh, uh, a closing date is my is always my advice. Always put some daft, you know, eleven pounds or whatever at the end of it. Put something at the end of it. Never a round figure. That's really good advice. Thanks, Michael. Um, so the next one, I know we've Paul's already sort of touched on the first home fund, but we did have a question just for, for more details on how the first home home fund works, and when should people apply for that, Paul? Okay, that's a very good question. Um, so let me explain a wee bit about the first home fund first. It's a shared equity scheme for solely for first-time buyers only. First-time buyers class is someone who has never owned a property in the UK before and currently doesn't own a home, obviously. Um, if it's a joint application, only one has to be a first-time buyer. The other one could be, a, a, obviously, um, had bought a property in the, in the past. So that's kind of what uh, the, the scheme's all about. Um, basically, the first home fund, you can get up to £25,000, I think I alluded to this earlier, from the Scottish government. Um, you must have 5% of your own funds that can come from um, savings or a gifted deposit or inheritance or really from, as long as it's not from a loan, um, it's got to be kind of saved or from a gift. Um, as I say, the website is a really good thing to look at. Um, the only thing with the First Home Fund is that um, the, 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 you have to repay the money back to the, the Scottish Government eventually once you sell the property plus any profit that you've made, a percentage of the profit. And as I say, rather than me um, explain all that to you because it is quite lengthy and quite complex, it's best to look at the website for that kind of part of it. Um, I mean, overall, I mean, what you are supposed to do with the first home fund is, first of all, speak to your, your uh, independent mortgage advisor. 
to get what's called an agreement in principle. Um, you should also, at that point, um, once you've got that, speak to uh, Mike, uh, the solicitor, to, you know, obviously to make sure that you're in a position, you can start making offers on properties as well. Um, obviously, um, once you identify the property, you make the offer for the property. If you're successful, um, then what happens after that, once you're successful, is... Um, Sorry, I disappeared there. I apologise. And um, yeah, what 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 happens once once you once your offer is accepted, and um, that means you've actually purchased the property, and then you apply for the first home fund. So so the thing is that um, the the funding for this this time is only sixty six million. It sounds a lot of money, but it's not really. So I, I unless the Scottish government decides to do a top up, um, I don't think the scheme is going to be available for a long time. I can't put a time scale on it, but um, yeah. So the the order of events are to get your agreement in principle, speak to the solicitor, get your offer in, it's accepted, then you apply for the home fund, and that normally takes between five and ten days to get approved, and then from there, basically, it's getting the mortgage offer and um, the solicitor doing all the legal work, and then the good thing at the end of it is you move into the house, fantastic, or the, or the flat. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Paul. And yeah, really useful. And I'm right in saying that you and the team at ESP Mortgages have dealt with quite a few first home fund transactions. You've dealt with a few, so you know how you know how they work and how how it all is structured. So if you are looking for any more insight into that, then definitely get in touch with Paul um, uh, because they can help advise you on the, the ins and outs of how that works and on when things fall into place at different times. Um, so yeah, so this is the final of our pre-submitted questions. Um, so this one is for the buy-to-let investors. Um, so someone who's interested in purchasing a, bu purchasing a buy-to-let property is asking, where is the highest rental demand and returns in Fife? So Michael, if you could take that one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my own practice, we obviously have a lettings uh, arm as well. Um, in so the five lettings market is different from the lettings market in Edinburgh and Glasgow, Dundee, wherever university towns, Edinburgh, obviously multiple universities. Um, so it's a very different sort of demand that, that we have. Um, the demand for type of property tends to be those aforementioned three bed semis for families and two bed flats. Um, some one bed flats, um, a lot of landlords shy away from one bed flats. If you're only going to have one buy to let, yeah, I think a two bed flat is the one to have. But if you're building a portfolio, portfolio having a, some one beds, primarily two beds, and maybe a few three beds, isn't a bad idea to have a spread, obviously. Um, in terms of where, uh, Dunfermline obviously is the most popular, um, being the, the, you know, the biggest town in, in West Fife. Um, but Dunfermline, it, again, going to the east, Kirkcaldy, uh, Resythe, Dalgetty Bay, Inverkeithing, because all have really good commuter links. Those all have railway stations uh, or and or park and ride facilities and what have you. So having that um, is, is a big help. In the former mining villages of uh, West Fife, for example, Kelty and Loch Gelly, Lower, lower demand there. Still is a demand, uh, but a, low, a lower demand there. Um, your yields in Dunfermline will be typically around about the 7% the seven yield being calculated by taking your um, monthly rental figure, annualising it by multiplying it by 12, dividing that by the acquisition cost of the purchase price plus your fees and land and buildings transaction tax because of course if you already own a property uh, and you're paying over uh, 45,000 pounds for this property and you will be um, you're going to pay four percent lbtt um, um, additional dwelling supplement so purchase price plus these additional costs um, divide the annual rent by that multiply it by 100 and that will give you your, your yield and seven percent is a good yield to, to, to be getting and you'll, you'll do well uh, at that. And again, you know, speak to financial advisors about the various buy-to-let uh, mortgages out there. Make sure you're getting the best deal. And make sure that having purchased it, you're speaking to a letting agent to make sure you get your um, private rental sector agreement drawn up uh, correctly uh, as well. 
that's great thanks michael and as you say obviously the the rental market in fife is very different to edinburgh or glasgow or anything so it is really good to get that sort of uh, local agent expertise there um to to help you work out where the right area is for investing um, so that's us at the end of our pre-submitted questions. Um, we haven't had any other um, questions popped into the Q&A box or chat box. Um, so I think we'll just end things there. But I've just before we finish, I wanted to thank you all for uh, coming along. Um, and I also wanted to thank um, Paul and Michael for their expertise there, some really useful insights there. Um, and thank you Ash as well for, um, for introducing us and, and getting us all set up. Um, we will uh, be, we, we are planning future, more events, virtual events in the future. You can keep an eye on our, if you just go onto ESPC.com forward slash events, you can see them as they, they, they pop up. Um, and we are also, if you do want to share this event with anyone, we are uh, hopefully going to be uploading it on YouTube and um, sharing later as well. Um, but thanks again for coming and um, have a great day. Um, Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.